I just finished test fitting this section and this is the second to last one for the frame of the cupboard and it is um, the front section to the top of the lower case where the top drawer will fit in and you see that it consists of just a few things these uh, styles they, is what they really are they're short to about nine inches long and three and a quarter inches square and um, I'll show you a little bit about how I work these but they're then simple units just mortised and tenon uh, uh, with these narrow rails and uh, then they meet those wide rails with the double tenons that we saw earlier. So I have one more of these to go and I'll show you a little bit about how I work that material. When I split these out and planed them, uh, I did them double long. So I knew I needed four of them at nine inches and two of them at six inches. So I made these all in the range of 20 to 24 inches long. It's just easier to handle them that way than as short blocks. Uh, easier for planing, uh, for every operation, planing, mortising, hewing, and then I sealed the end grain of them with the yellow glue as I've been doing. But uh, larger dimension stuff is harder to dry without defects than smaller dimension stuff. And so you can see I have extras. Um, and that way I picked through them and took sort of the best of the worst of them. On the surface out near the bark, they all dried just fine with no flaws, no cracks, no checking there. But of course, the radial surface won't check. Those are fine. I did get some checking on the ends um, just because there's so much stress in a large piece like that drying. And, um, but those I don't worry about because I'll be re-trimming the ends and they get covered with the shelves or the top of the cupboard and so forth. I did get checking on this inner tangential face, the, the part that's facing towards the middle of the tree. This is the bark of the tree, that's the heart of the tree. So I got checking in there <coughs> and in some cases uh, worse than in others. This one it's running right down the length of the piece and playing connect the dots with that check right there. Now the mortises would fall here so they wouldn't really, that crack wouldn't really affect the joinery but one concern was then if I sever this in half in the length that it would split right open. <coughs> so that one was a reject as was this one same reasoning it has a pretty long, <coughs> pardon me, it has a pretty long crack right there. I could use it if I had to, but I had one that was a little bit better than this one. Uh, and I've begun mortising this one, you see. Uh, here are the cracks in it, a shorter one there and smaller ones here. And this is where this piece will be cut. So that was the, the lesser of three evils in this case. So next I'll show you just how I go about working this. As I said, it's two of them. This part gets cut away. Um, and I have one more mortise to cut for that narrow top rail. It's only an inch and a quarter high, that rail. So the mortise is only an inch long. And for that, <coughs> I have a hard time getting in there with a mortise chisel and levering. So I'll just show you how I make that mortise. It's the only one that's different from all the others. And then I'll be able to test assemble the whole carcass. 
as I said, I don't chop this mortise with the chisel the same way I do the others, just because I don't have enough room to lever the waste out in there. And so for very short mortises, or for very wide ones, like in a bedstead or in a timber frame like this shop, I bore the waste out and then clean it out with chisels. So the, uh, it's marked out just as you ordinarily would. This mortise is three eighths of an inch wide. So I'm using a bit that is five sixteenths to leave me some room for um, clean up with the chisel. So what I want to do is get that bit started and I can see I'm leaning a little bit. So I keep this square handy with this work and then check that in both directions to align that bit and then bore it. <coughs> You can set a bit depth stop on your tool. Uh, I'm aiming for an inch and a half deep. It's just a couple of holes though, so I, um, I usually just jab it all in there. I know the blade of that all is, guess what, an inch and a half. So there I know I'm at least that deep. <coughs> I didn't know the length of that all. That was just serendipity. So I do the two end the two ends of the mortise first. And this is nothing earth shattering. It's for me not as satisfying as chopping the mortise. Um, <coughs> it's just a little slower, a little clumsier. I probably can't fit two more holes in there. So there's going to be some extra wood to chop out because these three holes don't connect. This one doesn't matter too much this way, whoops, uh, but it still matters this direction. I guess the best way to test that, I was just thinking, if this surface isn't reliable, putting the square on that doesn't help me much. And I could judge it by is the bit parallel to this face. And it's pretty close. So next comes the chisel work to clean that up. I just use uh, regular bevel edge chisels for this, not a mortise chisel at this point. I'll just highlight that mortise. There, whoops, there's my pencil line running through the line struck with the mortise gauge. So my chisel is going to start inside that pencil line and with the bevel into the waist just starting to break that stuff out like that and like that and I have to keep switching to a smaller chisel there to try now to lift that material out of there. And with these, these chisels aren't built for much prying like this, so you do want to make sure that whatever you're picking at in there is already severed. 
you don't want to wedge the chisel in there and have a hard time getting it back out. Now I'll come closer to that line. Could have picked a wider chisel for that too. Let me go get one more. That's a little better. So here I'll put it right in my mortise gauge line. Again, the bevel to the inside. Like that. And now chopping the end grain. So just back and forth like this. Once you get it down in there, you can uh, usually get the rest of it out pretty easily. All right, I'll try to do a test assembly of this lower case, um, such as it is. These units uh, uh, went over before. This is the side with that recessed style, these deep rails and the panels. So that's all test fitted. Um, and what I'll want to do is into that insert the back frame. And that's just uh, two rails in Moncton. So knock those together. long time ago I cut these so the mortises have shrunk a little. They're a little snug. And I have yet to cut panels for these. So here I have this is the top rail because that's step tenon if there's really enough room in this shop to do this for a video. I'll end up putting it on the floor, I guess. And that's probably where I am now, because the next thing to go in will be those three drawer rails, and then drop the, the other one of these units onto those five pieces. So let me rejig, put it on the floor and do that. These drawer rails are two different sizes. There's two at an inch and a quarter, one at an inch and a half. And I found out the hard way that the inch and a half one goes up top because I tried to put it down the bottom. And these fit in pretty easily. So now this game isn't terribly hard. Uh, it'd be easier if you had help. Uh, but it's within reason. So I get the back one started. And and try to engage that front one. These can slip in from above and below after the back, so that's pretty easy to deal with.
now comes those units I've been working on, the drawer front units. I think what I will do is rejig, put it back on the table, on the bench, and drop those on from above. This is the unit for the top drawer, and it's all sub-assembled, so it's just a matter of putting it on those tenons, locking it in place. That's too tight, so for final assembly later, I'll be sure to ease that a bit. Do 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 do. Those want to close a bit, and these are all set. So that'll be interesting. And here is uh, the unassembled set of these. drop them on the floor. And then these go down here. <laughs> Ooh, something is haywire. Let's hope not. I don't really want to redo any of this. an eighth of an inch. up these rails and they're open up there as well that doesn't make a lot of sense but um, that's why you have test assemblies that can close it bows it a little so something needs a little adjusting there. Uh, try the same thing on the top section. That closed up easier. Oh, well it isn't all the way closed. That'll all work. It take a little fiddling here and there uh, to figure out what the hassle is. But it's um, that's all the carcass. Now it's a matter of all the guts inside, four drawers and the runners for them, a shelf at this height, 
and then the top to the lowercase up there, uh, the pillars, and then all the ornaments. So this is a third of the work, and this video is now officially too long. Here I've got the upper case test fitted, laying on its back. There's a lot of work still to be done to it. Um, today I've been concentrating on finishing up some of the joinery. So here's the front rail for the cornice and the blocks. These are still extra long. They'll be trimmed right here and then flush at the top. But they rest on those two tenons. Let's see if it's going to work. <coughs> that looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah, that's the that's the cornice. So they'll get trimmed and then pillars will support them. But it's once that joint back there is pinned, it'll be tight enough anyway. All right, on to the next.